Eric Garner protests takes the streets after jury decision. LACC alumnus Steve Lebowitz donates sculpture ripples to LACC campus. Sheila D. visits the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory and takes us with her. This and much more coming up on Los Angeles Community Connection. Welcome to Los Angeles Community Connection. I'm Janae Henry. And I'm Adrian Rice. Thank you for joining us. Across the country, protests erupt after the Garner grand jury decision. Garner was surrounded by police and placed in a chokehold restraint procedure that is actually banned use of force in the state of New York. Garner 43 was selling loose cigarettes at the time near a local convenience store. During protests, crowds chant, I can't breathe, no justice, no peace, while throwing cigarettes on the ground and crushing them. Autopsy report confirms the cause of his death was due to unnecessary and misuse of force. In new developments following the grand jury decision, the Department of Justice will conduct a full investigation and review the grand jury decision in this case. Eric Holder, spokesperson for the Department of Justice, stated in a press conference, all agencies are working together along with the President of the United States. The sense of trust has been tested across the country that needs to be restored. Los Angeles federal investigators took 20 boxes of documents from Los Angeles Unified School District headquarters Monday, all related to the district's much debated $1.3 billion student technology project, school district officials said Tuesday. An FBI spokeswoman confirmed that there is a pending investigation involving the school districts but couldn't confirm further. Tablets were first distributed in the summer of 2013 and various controversies have cropped it up since then. Students removed security measures and the devices, allowing greater access to the internet. Teachers initially reported confusion about the teaching and the technology and a school board committee investigation raised questions about its implementation. Concerns also mounted over the bidding process and Mr. Daisy resigned in October. In part, due to the poor reception of the project, Mr. Daisy said the bidding process was conducted properly. If the FBI thinks federal law was violated, they will look to see who violated it. That could mean anybody who negotiated the contract, so it could mean former Superintendent Daisy, it could mean the people he negotiated the contract with. LACC unveils the Ripple statue. Steve and Debbie Lovowitz have donated $120,000 to Los Angeles City College to inspire a passion for love and art and for others. Steve is an alumnus at LACC and wanted to share this piece of art in students and the public. LACC President R Renee D. Martinez said she is honored to have this beautiful piece of art on campus and will hopefully remind you of alumnus Steve Lebowitz. The unveiling of the Ripple sculpture happened in early December 2014. Notorious tar smells and smoke have become a regular occurrence at Los Angeles City College in recent weeks. Students and staff have complained of the heavy smoke and smell of the ongoing construction site near the administration building. It is reported that the smell was from the asphalt from being laid from the foundation for the new Holmes Hall building, according to the California o Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, website. More than half a million workers are exposed to the fumes from asphalt when working in road paving, roofing, and concrete work. Exposure to asphalt or its fumes can be, result in a headache, skin rash, fatigue, throat and eye irritation, cough, and skin cancer, according to OSHA. Toy Drive. Local Team Jimba's 2014 annual Toy Drive and Gift Drive goes global. JADV, Jimba Against Domestic Violence, is a grassroots Los Angeles organization that has hosted an annual Christmas toy and gift drive for victims of domestic violence. JADV was funded by Jimba in 27, 20, 2007, when he was a teenager in seventh grade. Jimba is now a young man attending a university in Rome, and he has taken his toy drive global. Jimba's toy drive is simultaneously being held in Los Angeles and Rome from November 27th through December 18th. The drive will benefit the Genesee Center Project Peacemakers, Inc. In Los Angeles, in Casa Insazionale del Rome. Oh, hey, you caught me. We're here today at Project Peacemakers, handing out toys from 2013's Jimba's Toy Drive. We have all these toys here today. This is our fourth 
um, drop off and give away. I just want to say thank you to everyone who supported the toy drive and thank you to everyone who went out and gave and put a toy in the collection box. Um, this has been an awesome year. Thanks to everyone who sponsored us and gave toys and donated. This has been an awesome year. I'm happy to say that we collected 1,000 toys. That's amazing. Um, once again, we came through for all the women and children of domestic violence. Um, today we're here at Project Peacemakers, as you can see in back of me, and we're giving out toys. The mission is to help prevent violence against women and their children and help mothers bring a little joy to their children at Christmas. The annual toy and gift drive is just one of his many efforts to help those in need. The teen recruits are collecting toys and gifts at Oakwood Secondary School, Crossroads, Crossroads Upper School, Wagon Wheels Preschool, The Walter School, and Legends Barbershop in Netherland Concerts. The public drop-off location in Los, An Los Angeles is Legends Barbershop, the Uberhip Barbershop on the trendy Fairfax Ave in Los Angeles, Fairfax Village area. To read more about this extraordinary group visit, visit www.jimba.org. When we return, we will talk about the state suing President Obama on the executive actions on immigration. As well as a rupture pipeline that spews into a nature preserve in Israel. We'll be right back after this short break. Hello, I'm Dr. Shyan Mustafa, geophysicist with the USGS. Earthquakes in California can strike anywhere, anytime, causing major damage to our structures, roads, and lives. Prepare to survive by practicing how to drop, cover, and hold on. Create an earthquake emergency kit that includes an emergency backpack with food and water, a radio, and a first aid kit. And last, but certainly not least, prepare a family disaster plan. Remember, don't be scared, be prepared. For more information, log on to www.ready.gov. Welcome back to the show. Texas and 16 other states filed a federal lawsuit on Wednesday, challenging President Obama's executive actions on immigration, arguing that he violated his constitutional duty to enforce the laws and illegally place new burdens on state budgets. The lawsuit filed in federal court in Brownsville, Texas, was the first major le legal challenge to initiatives. President Obama announced November 2020 20th, that, will, that he will provide protection from deportation and work permits to up to 5 million immigrants in the country illegally. Attorney General Greg Abbott of Texas, which led the coalition bringing the challenge, said President Obama was advocating his responsibility to faithfully enforce the laws that were duly enacted by Congress and attempting to rewrite immigration laws, which he has no authority to do. the president's executive order and the actions of federal agencies to implement that executive order directly violate a fundamental promise to the American people. Nationwide beekeepers have lost about 30% of their honeybees. Over the past eight years from too many pesticides, disease and colony collapse disorder. In California, beekeepers have an extra worry. Bees can't find enough food because of the drought. Some beekeepers in California will receive disaster assistance for colony losses suffered from 2011 to 2013. The funds come from the USDA's Emergency Assistance Program for livestock, honeybees, and farm-raised fish. In California, 95% of the applicants were beekeepers. The USDA will provide California beekeepers an estimate $5 million for losses the health of honeybees across the country affects California agriculture. 1.7 million colonies are just needed to pl pollinate the state's almond crops. 
A major pipeline leak has caused oil to gush into the Arava Desert in southern Israel, threatening a protected nature reserve, officials said Thursday. The incident took place just north of the Red Sea Re Resort city of Iliad and 500 meters from the border of Jordan, Gilad. Golab of Israel's environmental services company told AFP that 1,000 cubic meters, the equivalent of 40 tanker trucks of oil, had been spilled Golob said the environmental damage could be serious, pointing out that the spill occurred in an area that is protected by a nature reserve. He said it could take several weeks to clear all traces of the oil and months to ensure that it has not seeped underground. We do not suspect an act of sabotage, he added, saying it appeared a vehicle had hit a part of a pipeline causing the leak. The U.S. Navy revokes Bill Cosby's honorary title, claiming allegations of sexual abuse against him are in conflict with his values. Master Chief, Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, Michael Stevens, said they were taking action stating the allegations against Mr. Cosby are very serious and are in conflict with its Navy core values of honor, courage, and commitment. The Navy addressed the issue in a public statement on its website. Cosby enlisted in the Navy in 1956 and served for four years as a hospital courtsman before being honorably discharged in 1960 as a third class petty officer. Mr. Cosby, former alumni member, also resigned from the Board of Trustees of the Temple University in Philadelphia. Several broadcasters have shelved projects with Mr. Cosby, including NBC and Netflix. According to several scheduled performances for venues in New York, have backed out of the upcoming performances with the actor. Mr. Cosby is facing a series of allegations. 18 women have gone public with their allegations of sexual assault against the comedian. Attorney Gloria Allred called on Bill Cosby to waive the rights under the Statue of Limitations and states that if you do so, everyone wins. At the press conference on Wednesday, Ms. Allred states victims have reached out to her to see what, what legal rights they had. Bill Cosby attorney released a statement saying the comedian is a target of extortion and allegations have damaged Mr. Cosby's public image and reputation. Every week we like to spend some time getting to know someone who inspires us. Roger Big Smith joins us for an exclusive interview with Professor Daniel Marlos on our segment of Off the Red Line. Hello and welcome to Off the Red Line. I'm your host, Roger Big Smith. Today we have our very own Professor Daniel Malos, Chair of the Media Arts Department here at LACC. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us. Well, thank you for having me, Roger. How long have how long has it been? How long have you been teaching here at LACC and what classes do you teach? Well, actually, my history here at Los Angeles City College goes a little further back. I was a student here beginning in the 80s. Wow. Then I became a classified employee on City College campus. <laughs> I started teaching part-time in 2001. I was hired to teach full-time in 2004, and eight wow. months later, I clawed my way up to the position of department chair. Oh, wow. And I teach analog photography classes here, and I teach portraiture here at City College. Interesting. I see your love of bow ties and boots. Can you tell me something about your style? Yeah, yeah, that's a well-oiled machine. <laughs> um, bow ties go back probably to the 70s. I started oh. buying vintage ties back then, and they became so hard to find, I started making my own. And then cowboy boots, you know, I had a pair of cowboy boots when I was five, <laughs> along with my rocking horse and <laughs> toy pistols, and I think that little boys love cowboy boots, and I think I'm still a little boy at heart. <laughs> If you had a chance to go back in time and take one photo, what will it be of? Wow, I would really love to be on the Beagle and photograph Charles Darwin, especially at the point in time when the light bulb went on and he figured out the theory of evolution. <laughs> what are your hobbies? My hobbies. Well, um, for about the past 14 or 15 years, I've been identifying insects online. Wow. So I have a website that I maintain, mm. and um, people send photos in from all over the world that they take with their cellular telephones and email in. So that's something that occupies a lot of my time, and I love gardening. 
I really like digging in the dirt. I think it's a really nice thing. I mean, my, my job is very high pressure and uh -huh. digging in the dirt is very relaxing. <laughs> so I enjoy that. I enjoy gardening. Do you miss Phil? Do I miss film? There's nothing to miss. Film is still here. It hasn't really gone anywhere. Mm. Um, I do teach analog photography classes, so I do teach film okay. development, chemical processes. And I think that what has happened is we had the digital revolution. Mm. Um, working photographers are all working digitally. However, I think having a, a strong foundation in analog film photography is really critical to understanding the medium. Mm -hmm. And many photography programs across the nation have eliminated their traditional dark rooms. Mm -hmm. I think that was very short-sighted. And we are now getting people from all over the city because we still offer traditional photography here. Mm, that's good, that's good. What are your views on the new camera technology? new camera technology. Well, you know, I mean, I, I appreciate digital photography for, for what it is. I think being that so much is being done on the internet, it's the easy thing to do. But um, my own personal love is still with film. Okay. <laughs> can you tell, can you tell us the future of, can you tell us the future, I'm sorry, can you tell us the future, can you tell me what holds the future can you tell me what does the future hold for the media department here at LACC? Well, um, we are a vocational program, so we have several um, certificates in digital photography, photojournalism, commercial photography, and because of that we are able to uh, provide um, uh, certificates for students that are here just to learn a, a vocation. We also have a degree program. We have transfer courses. We've maintained our core curriculum. So we, um, you know, we have classes that transfer to the university level. We have okay. a very strong and robust program. Okay, not bad, not bad. I'm your, there you have it. I'm your host, Roger Big Smith. Thank you all for tuning in Off the Red Line. After the break, we will have more news from Los Angeles Community Connection. Stay tuned. Welcome back for more exciting news. Sheila D joins us to talk about the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Let's take a look at what's going on inside. I'm Sheila D here at the 2014 JPL NASA Open House. This open house is a two-day event put on once a year by JPL to let members of the public come in and find out what JPL and NASA are doing. Organizer Kim Levens shares how popular this event is. We've got a lot of people here today. Um, we're over 10,000 already. Our parking lots are saturated. We're, the good news is people are going home, so more people are being able to come in and park in the closer lots. Um, we have probably... 500 plus employees staffing this exhibit today, helping us to uh, formulate our booths and keep people moving. We have our spacecraft assembly facility open, which has SMAP, one of our, our uh, missions that is going to launch out of Vandenberg Air Force Base this January. We have a big comet model that is uh, over in one of our cafeteria uh, patio areas that is kind of showing a lot of steam coming off of it. It's kind of, kind of cool. With so much to see, it's hard to know where to start. Where is a good starting point? So a good starting point, if you haven't ever been to JPL, you can start up here in our Space Flight Operations Facility. Um, this right here is where we control our Mars rovers. Um, also our satellites and our deep space network are controlled from here. Uh, it looks like um, when you see in the movies, you've got people at a control panel and they've got all the computers that they're looking at. Another great place to visit, number 15 on the map here, um, this is SAP. It's our space assembly facility. Uh, yeah. We've got a satellite in there called SMAP. This is a spa, uh, SMAP spacecraft. It's currently on its side. It's a spacecraft. It's ready for uh, shipment and it's uh, complete. So it's an unusual situation where we have a complete spacecraft ready to show at an open house. From spacecrafts to space cars, we'll take a look at the Mars Exploration Station. What we do here is ask little children to lie down on the ground and we run a little eight-wheeled rover over them and this is to demonstrate how a rover can stay balanced on the Martian surface. What kind of information do we find out from them? Many of the rocks we discover were formed in water 
and that's that's proof that water existed on Mars. And our goal is to colonize Mars, so there will be humans who are, who will go to Mars at some point. But it also helps us understand what may happen to the Earth. With 22 sites to see, there was a lot of ground to cover. The JPL grounds are 177 acres, uh, which is the same amount as Disneyland. We have a, a mailboxes, we have a, a little fire department, and it's, it's kind of like a very, very small town. So a lot of walking, a lot of hills, because we're built into the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains. Neither the walking nor the lines discouraged people from coming out to see the weekend's exhibit. We actually braved some of the lines and saw the Earth Science exhibit and we saw the really fascinating solar system exhibit. But no one could see it all in one day. I definitely would come back next year. I thought it was fascinating. It's a privilege to get in here. I know that it's only once a year and I definitely would come back. The open house is an excellent opportunity for the public to get a taste of the remarkable advancements NASA and JPL have made. Besides their annual open house, JPL offers public tours through their website jpl.nasa.gov. Tours do fill up fast, so make sure to book in advance. This month of December, Disney adds a wintry and fun adventure to its amusement parks. Big changes are happening on the studio lot of Disneyland as it adds the Frozen experience from its instant classic movie to Disneyland starting January 7th in its Disney Hollywood Studios. To make this all happen, a conversion of the Muppet 3D Theater in Hollywood will turn into Andrell's Crown Jewel Theater to host a Frozen sing-along celebration. Some other highlights of the experience, Alof's Fro Snow Fest with a play area musical performance and photo opportunities. A parade in a horse drawn sleigh down Hollywood Boulevard followed by a dance party each day, a DJ live band and course themed music from the movie. And lastly, it wouldn't be a Disney experience without fireworks. Disney plans to release the early looks of the new Frozen editions on December 20th. The most famous cat in Hollywood is healthy again. The famous lion named P-22 has recovered after the eight-month-long eight month battle with the mange. Biologists say the lion ingested rat poison, which could have brought on the case of the mange. Biologist Jeff Sikish has placed a camera out of the big cat's way and captured over 1,500 still images, which is where the biologists can see from various angles how the lion is recovering. His profile looks good, his coat is good, as well as his belly looks rounder and fuller, meaning he's healthy. P-22 lives in Griffith Park in the Los Feliz area of Los Angeles. It's the most wonderful time of the year for millions of Americans and gift recipients are in the, for a real treat this holiday season. We wish a happy gifting and found the best possible gifts for you to give your friends and family without breaking the bank and where to shop for them. Our little top gifting ideas this year. Voodoo wicks for everyone who loves candles, a comfy, cozy Christmas feeling at home, and tantalizing scents of figs, cucumber melon, and vanilla tobacco. The next must-gift present this year are the Bond Bliss Bath and Body Treats. The bath scrubs are so adorable, they're shaped like little candies and available in over a dozen different scents. For those who are very busy in the holiday season, a meaningful but cute last-minute present-like gift cards is always a good advice. Top places to shop. The Grove in West Hollywood and the 3rd Street Promenade in Santa Monica make you feel like you are there in the North Pole with Santa. Their Christmas decorations are really bright, breathtaking and worth spending the afternoon They're with your friends and family. Coming up next is Dave Martin sharing his opinion on literacy affecting people in all walks of life, including college students. We will be right back after this short break. Domestic violence doesn't know anything about discrimination. It could affect anyone regardless of age, race, gender, or sexual orientation. Only in the U.S., one in three women and one in four men suffer from domestic violence. And more than 10 million people are affected each year. Domestic violence doesn't stop at physical violence. It includes sexual assault, intimidation, and emotional abuse. Together, we can't stop domestic violence. A better home. A better world starts from home. If you or someone you know is going through this, please call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. Or you can also visit the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence website at www.ncadv.org for more information. Because, because love, love shouldn't, shouldn't hurt. hurt.
better. Study break, come and view LACC's featured films. With finals here, we can all use a study break and a mind refresher right here on LACC campus. The cinema students are hard at work making short films. You can view them on December 16th, which is a Tuesday, and December 17th, which is a Wednesday. With a $3 donation that goes towards the cinema department's equipment and fund costs, the films that will be shown are from students taking beginning motion picture workshop and digital video production workshop. The audience will vote which is the best film and the winner receive will receive $100. This is a great opportunity for LACC filmmakers to show their work in the big screen. LACC department is known for their famous student films that have later gone on to be big feature films. So come out and support your fellow filmmakers and peers. More students to take notice to the Collegian newspaper. The students voice for Los Angeles City College since 1929. Many students don't even know the name of the newspaper or that it even exists. The Collegian is written by students and has a circulation of 4,000 copies every two weeks. The entire team dedicates their time to this newspaper to make it interesting and enjoyable. The newspaper covers much information about music, events, student clubs, and opportunities to help students with books and scholarships. Pick up your copy today. The next time you see the blue containers, it's free. Los Angeles Community Connection strives to give all voice of members of our community. Dave Martin shares his opinion on literacy affecting people from all walks of life, even college students. Illiteracy, it affects people from all walks of life, even college students. According to the most recent survey conducted by, in 2006 by the National Center of Education Statistics, 31% of college graduates can read a complex book and extrapolate from it. Shockingly, 69% of college students cannot read at or above proficient level. The illiteracy rate among college students should not be so high. So where does the problem of, where does the problem begin? It begins when a person is just starting school, say in preschool or kindergarten. If a proper foundation for reading and writing isn't established when children are young, Later on, they are going to run into turbulent waters. As students get older, the homework becomes more difficult as they move on into junior high and high school. If their reading and writing skills are not up to academic standards, they're going to have a tough time when it comes to doing 10 to 15 page essays and book reports. If they then, if they then decide to go on to college, the problem becomes even more compounded because now they have to read college level material, which when a person has a literacy problem will just be sheer agony. One of the reasons I believe young people do not read today is because they are so preoccupied with their video games. Why read, right? It's just easier to pop a disc into a game gaming system and watch all the flashing lights, explosions, and brilliant colors. Heaven forbid that I should have to open a book and actually read something. Then I would have to use my imagination because after all, there are no images in a book. Anyone can overcome illiteracy. I'm a perfect example. I flunked ninth grade English because I was not where I should have been academically when it came to reading and writing. Two years later, while a junior in high school, I took a speed reading class. Things changed drastically. My writing and reading skills skyrocketed. Today, I own a Kindle and have more than 1,400 books in my account. No one has to remain illiterate. Will it take work to defeat it? Yes, but it's worth it in the long run. Thank you for sharing, Dave. Don't forget to follow LACC TV on Facebook at LACC TV and on Twitter at LACC underscore TV. Thank you for watching. I'm Janae Henry. And I am Adrian Rice, signing off for Los Angeles, Los Angeles Community Connection.